G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the western side of the map, we've got Genghis Khan playing as the Chinese. Now, in the top right hand corner of the screen, you will see that the uh, ranking shows him as 52,000. I can confirm that is not correct. So he's actually currently sitting at rank 11 on the ladder. So ignore that. Uh, I believe it's something to do with the fact that he has changed his name. So he used to be going as Reptile, now going to be going as Genghis Khan, but a little bit curious considering he's playing the Chinese. So curious uh gonna be starting us off with a uh a lumber camp obviously we are playing on black forest here so he's gonna be looking to expand over to the water and uh collecting up all of his sheep nice and early no imperial official coming out just yet we'll take a look over towards the opposite side of the map where we've got his opponent 3db spawning in and playing the mongols gonna be looking towards a potential uh dock opening here as well obviously he got started out his uvu nice and early we, do we potentially see some sort of two villager production probably not Actually, I, I did see a suggestion on Reddit. It might have been Reddit, might have been the official forums, I can't remember. But it was like, please let us use the Uvu to do two times docks. Because that would be pretty cool, right? Like, imagine if you had a stone spawn. Like, you stone spawned here, and then you were doing, like, double like double making fishing boats. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be all right. I could do that. We'll take a look at 3DB and see what he gets up to. So Khan now moving out across the map. He's found the three villages towards the middle of the map. We've already got the Gur coming out. Is he not... This is suicide. You can't, you can't not water boom on this map. What are you What are you doing, 3DB? Not like this, my friend. Didn't your mama ever tell you? Well, I don't know about you guys, but when I was young, my mum taught me three things. First and foremost, eat your vegetables. Second and uh, second of all, attend school. You know, even if you don't enjoy it, just go to school. That's all that matters. And third and foremost, water boom on water maps. Like it's it's easy. It's super duper easy. You make a dock. You make fishing boats. But we'll take a look over at Genghis Khan. We'll see exactly what he's uh, he's up to. So he's going to be continuing to add villagers. Already got that first fishing boat out. Going to be moving towards the second fishing boat. So he's looking to get that ball rolling on the ocean, open ocean. It's not really that open though. I mean, it's open if you like if you if you do it like that. Not really. And speaking of ocean, uh, towards the north here, there's like there is a whole bunch of ocean. It, this is so swamp looking though. Like you look at that and you're like, Ugh. like I wouldn't want to set up a deck chair over there. Uh, but now we've got the Khan continuing to harass some of the villagers up towards the north of Genghis Khan's base. So uh, a little bit of a curious situation. But uh, one of the things to note is uh, it looks like 3DB has only got one. Oh, look at that. That is so interesting. So in the in this map, okay, you've got like the, the trees that spawn and then you've got the forests that spawn. So as an example, uh, I'm trying to find it. Okay. So I guess we'll just talk about this one. So you can see that there is a very clear difference between the the trees that are here. Okay, it goes from from like these kind of trees and then into these dense sort of what have we got bamboo trees and then into spruce trees and then back to bamboo trees. So very clearly uh, there was going to be and by the way this is this is hella annoying right now. But very clearly there was meant to be I, actually there was meant to be two pathways through right here. There was meant to be the first pathway through and then there was meant to be a second pathway through and both of them have been sealed off by these wild spruce spawns. So that's kind of crazy. You, I wonder if you could actually get imagine if there was a triple fucking spruce spawn and literally you know what i'm, I'm pretty confident that there would be somewhere a spru a triple spruce spawn that completely locks you into your base and it's like you know you're basically playing black forest age of empires 2 edition uh except you you've only got one passage through the middle all right we'll, we'll take a look over at how genghis khan's doing so genghis khan has got one two three ways into his base obviously uh 3db only got the one way into his base so not gonna be the happiest of chaps considering he's playing the mongols and they don't get to wall um but uh gonna be starting off with a barrack so th i think that um I, I think that genghis khan is probably gonna be no noticing this and be quite happy i think that this is a really good uh spot for him but we do have the double villages coming out and i'm really curious what 3db thinks he's gonna be able to achieve here because in, in my opinion it is basically a death sentence uh well, not a death sentence but you, you guys know what i mean right like if, if you are trying to play this game or play this map without water you've basically got to win it in, in in like the first six minutes of the game and if you can't bad luck water is already paid off for the enemy you can't do anything. You cannot do anything. Villagers are looking to come in, but like once again, like the only spot you're going to be able to come in is over here. And even if you somehow manage to, like he's still got an imperial official, and he's just going to come out here and he's just going to collect gold from that angle. Like there's not a lot that you're going to be able to do. Uh, he hasn't even really spotted that angle. He's actually working up towards this northern angle. He does know that the uh, lumber camp is over here, but 3DB, uh, he's going up against a person who hasn't even skipped a beat. 
Villager's going to be jumping inside that outpost now. Going to be firing down on those villagers. He's already ready got to go up. And 3DB at this point is probably just going to be tapping out, right? Like, surely this is a good game. Uh, outpost now going to be coming up. But what does this outpost even achieve, though? That's the thing. Barbican of the Sun going to be going up here towards the north. He's really got to be pincering in here. He's like, you know what? Those villagers, they're not too long for this world, my friend. Uh, you got you got another thing coming, that is for sure. But, uh, I mean, th these villagers, like, okay, he can commit to um, to putting these in the in the outpost. But he doesn't even need to. The only thing he needs to do is just sort of wait uh, until the villagers try and move forward, and then he can just put them back in the outpost again, because he doesn't care about this outpost coming up. What's it going to do? What's it going to stop? It's not going to stop anything. It's fine. It is absolutely fine for him to be able to do this. So I think that this early Mongol pressure is somewhat like a bit doomed from the beginning, just because of how fast fishing boats also pay off. So already at this point, he's up eight fishing boats, and when you compare that to the Mongols, who's sitting on 21 villagers, two are in his enemy's base at this point in time, it's not looking good. It's not looking pretty for him. He is now managing to get down another outpost here. Let's have a look and see whether he's going to be able to, to uh, meet that. It doesn't look like it. He might have to pull villagers to bust this. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it. He is, it is firing off towards those spears. Manages to take out one. I don't think it's going to get that second one. No, it's not going to get that second one. Uh, but uh, I don't think... Even... Like, the, the crazy thing is, right? Like, even if this somehow succeeds... Well, it's not like there's any shortage of wood. Genghis Khan just comes down here, he drops his lumber camp, he walls that, and he's, he's happy as Larry. So, like, what's, what's, I don't, I don't get what 3D's trying to achieve here. This is, this, I am, I, this is a head scratch, I don't know. Does it just, is, is he playing 3D chess at the moment? Like, what's he doing? And he's not going to be able to get the villagers out because the Barbican's blocking him in. It's going to be slow and steady, but this is going to burn that down. We'll take a look over at his main base and see what he's got going on. It looks like he's kind of thinking about Fast Castle. Now, finally adding a dock. I think he's realized, he's like, oh, this didn't go to plan. This did not go to plan. You, yeah, yeah, of course it didn't go to plan. Your enemy, scout, your enemy scouted you not on water. What, is, what, is, what did you think he was going to do? Just sit there and just take the, the tower rush? No, he pop, popped out a tower like six minutes before you even came into his base. And you only came into his base at three minutes. He, he prepared before the game hand, 3, 3DB. Now 3DB going to be dropping down a girl. <laughs> <laughs> 3db really setting up camp now gonna be looking towards that arrow slits upgrade uh, what does that say adds defensive arrow slits to the structure and increases garrison arrow range range by plus percent one percent only one weapon emplacement can be added what does that even plus percent one percent does it even make sense does that make sense to you guys i thought it was just plus two range because doesn't it go from like six to eight tiles I think that's what it is. Dynasty now going to be coming down for Genghis Khan. Uh, let's see those arrow slits getting added in. So this is going to increase their range. Yeah, you can see the range really gets... Look, look at that range. It's so ludicrous, dude. I love that the tower rush is, like, actually working here. Such a such a toxic Mongol thing. But uh, now coming in... <laughs> no way. Oh, is, is 3D going to actually go for this? I don't think he can. He probably could have got squeezed the villagers through and come behind here like that and actually look to take that. Do we have a potential... Imagine if we have a junk coming out. And I, I love it. 3D is now com committing to the dock here. Triple Archer going to be coming out. Quad Triple Archer is empowering that. There's multiple archers coming out. And as we mentioned earlier, now Lumber Camp just going to be coming down towards the south. He's walling up the front as well. So really looking to stick it to the enemy. And uh, that that uh, spear is just going to get taken out completely uh, by the archers. So not even a, not even a tough time for them. Uh, villagers going to be doing their best to stay on. But uh, they actually get a pretty decent block in right there. And uh, Khan going to be going down. A couple of uh, a couple of sheep going over there as well. So do we have any scout coming back for his opponent? I don't think so. Uh, going to be falling back now with those uh, with those uh, those villagers. The villager does manage to go down. So he's already picked off a couple of villagers. But keep in mind, he's behind quite far when it comes to the fishing boats. Uh, so look, at this point, I'm definitely favoring uh, the Chinese player's position. He's, he's looking pretty good, pretty healthy at this point in time. He's got four out of four Imperial officials out as well. Uh, 41 villagers, compare that over to his opponent, who is sitting at the moment at 32. So we have got a significant villager lead at the moment now for his uh, for Genghis Khan. So going to be adding in some pastures, uh, dropping down double pasture next to the Uvu. Now, keep in mind the pasture, I think it does get a buff uh, from the Uvu. Uh, I think it just reduces the time it takes to actually, to actually uh, spawn a sheep. We'll have to see that here. Um, yeah, pastors produce sheep faster. So we'll have to see. There you go. So it's going to come through in a minute uh, compared to a minute 30, which it normally takes, I would guess. I don't know exactly how that works, but now uh, we'll take a look over at the Chinese player's base. We'll see exactly what he's up to. Doesn't look like he's gone for too many upgrades just yet. He's got the plus one on the... Um, 
He's going for... Actually, he's got a lot of upgrades. I take that back. He's got plus one wood cutting, plus one mining. Uh, doesn't have a mill down yet by the looks of it. Actually, there's the mill. Uh, going for wheelbarrow. Going to be going for horticulture too, I suspect, as well. So he is really, like, going ham on the upgrades. Also got that that uh, T1 uh, fishing technology. So he's going to be in a pretty, pretty good position here. And uh, now, actually, he, I like this stonewalling up the front of his base. He's like, I kind of need some stone here. Uh, so it looks like he might be thinking about a second town center as well, which is a very safe move. Uh, so I think in this matchup, you're already so far ahead considering that you opened water, your enemy didn't open water. So I think there's definitely the flexibility in here. If he wants to go for that second town center, go for it. You're not going to be struggling too hard against the Mongol player. We'll take a look over at 3DB and see what he's up to. Now going to be going up for the step redoubt. So he is trying his best to keep up with his opponent. Only three fishing boats out though and not really adding in any more at this point in time. Khan now finally rising up from the dead. And, uh, and these outposts. I mean, he's got a couple villages back up here. Three spears in this. Going to keep them safe, but... You got to, you just got to scratch your head, really. I don't, I don't think it did the damage that it needed to, but, uh, you know, knowing the Mongols, 3DB still somehow comes out ahead uh, of this. We'll have to see how he manages to do, but uh, he's slowly working on this outpost, and the villagers aren't actually able to get in here and heal this one up, so he could potentially crawl forward, but it's going to be, uh, at that point, by the time that happens, it's going to be so late in the game that we're probably going to have, you know, spears coming out and all that, all that juicy stuff coming out. But now Genghis Khan... Aging up to the third age as well. Going to be going up with the Astronomical Clock Tower. So what kind of composition are we going to see from him? I would expect that we see a spear with uh, Nesta B combination. I think this is a pretty decent combination uh, going into the mid game. Uh, it, it's quite good against Mongols because typically they want to go for those lances. So it makes sense to really add in those uh, add in those spears. Make sure you get all those upgrades. So we'll have to keep an eye on him and see what he looks to go for. Town Center going to get dropped down now for him, so he's definitely playing it safe and really looking to boom hard. He's on 54 villagers at the moment. Add in the uh, the tax in, uh, or imperial officials. He's on 59 right now. Compare that over to his Mongol opponent, who sits in on 41. So, a significant uh, lead for him. He's, he does have the, the step redoubt out, so that's going to give him an extra four or five villagers here. Uh, but uh, plenty of pastures now coming out for 3DB as well. So, looking to really try and boost his economy up here. You see all the villagers getting in on the action down here. Uh, I think it still takes a minute. No, it takes a minute 30. I'm not sure exactly what this... Um, oh, maybe it takes a minute 20 to train it. And then it just gets a reduction when it spawns. Let's let's watch. It's going to come down to five seconds. Let's see if that's what happens. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. It should go up to 60. No, it's not. It's 80 seconds. Okay, I don't, I don't know how it works. I do not know how it works. Khan got to spot, spot out the second town center. So I, I feel like at this point, 3DB realizes he's on a timer. Uh, and so when you're on a timer, that means that you have got to, uh, you've got to make it, you've got to make action. you got to make action happen right now. So what does it mean to be on a timer? To be on a timer means that there is a window. A window for you before or to attack before your enemy is going to have an investment that pays off. And so what is that investment? That investment is the town center. And obviously there's, that's going to train villagers up. And often a comment that I see on YouTube quite a, a lot is, hey, Drongo, why, why do people make a second town center? What's the whole point behind it? So the idea is, Obviously, at just at a very basic level, villagers gather resources, villagers cost resources, but they also pay back their resources that they gather, or sorry, that they cost very, very quickly. So as an example, we've got a villager here that costs 50 food. Now, how quickly does it take a, ga a villager to gather 50 food? Well, there's 15 food, so it's going to take three trips of doing that to get up to 45. So, you know, with, within a minute, they're basically going to pay themselves off. And so essentially what happens is that not only do those villagers need to pay themselves off, but they also need to pay off the town center as well. And there will become a point in the near future, where that will happen, where the villagers will need to, or will be paying themselves off and the town center, and that is the window that you need to attack. That is the immediate window that you need to try and get in towards your opponent's base, and that's exactly what 3D is doing now, so he knows his enemy is going to be looking to invest in the economy. We see the four lancers beginning to come in towards the south of his base right now, so this is the correct move. We do have those spears coming out, as well as the palace guards, looking to hold off his opponent. Imperial official just doing its best to continue gathering up gold and going to be forcing back his opponent at this point. And I think the, the question is, what is the appropriate response to the spearmen? Because keep in mind, they are fo they are fighting in choke points. Another wall going to be coming up right here uh, for, uh, for his opponent. So with the fights happening in choke points like this, it really makes it quite easy for the spears to work well with the nest of bees. So I think the first and foremost, the best response is that you're going to want some form of uh, sprinkled out to try and deal with the nest of bees. 
but then you've got to try and deal with the spearmen. So you, you go for archers, and then you've got to try and out-micro your enemy. It really comes down to having more line of sight than your opponent. Sheep Carcass is going to go down, prevent this from going up. You can see it's actually called a monastery right now, but it's going to be changing a, um, it's going to be changing once it comes up. So it, at the moment, it's called monastery. You wait for it. It'll be, it'll go down to a prayer tent. Here it comes. Watch. This is very, I, I feel like I'm the only one who's pointing this out. No one else is talking about this. Now it's a prayer tent. Like the game is literally unplayable, man. Literally unplayable. Uh, but uh, the, the back door is continuing strong for 3DB. He's managed to work down the outpost of his opponent. He's taken down the lumber camp. And of course, he's now working towards achieving uh, victory on that house. Uh, working it down to 368 health and slowly working on that Imperial Academy as well uh, with his outposts. And Barbican of the Sun going to continue firing off on this outpost. Not doing a whole lot of damage, though. I think it's managing to do one damage a tick. Indeed, it is. So it's been 240 attacks that it's managed to get in. Veteran Spear is now going to be coming through for his opponent. We'll check on what the upgrades are. And there they are. They're looking like he's going to be going for double blacksmith. Managed to get the walls off here and also going to be going Springlords himself. Looks like he might be thinking about fast Imperial here. Now, this is, in my opinion, this is the best Chinese strategy. You go fast Imperial and you just go straight into elite palace guards. I don't think anything can actually stop that. China's economy is incredible. When they go 2 2 Cs uh, and they go with their dynasty, it's basically three town centers. Well, it's techni technically more villager production than three town centers. It's slightly more. It works out to be 3.09. Um, so it is uh, it is one of those things where it's like, if you don't kill China, uh, they will kill you. It is, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a very simplistic way of, of thinking about it. But essentially, that, that, is, that is the bottom line. If, if you do not kill China uh, in that early stage of the game, they are going to destroy you. Uh, in the late game because there's no real way that you're going to be able to keep up with their production and most importantly with their bombards their bombards are notoriously strong in the late game and to be honest probably need a bit of a nerf so i think the best way to nerf them is through uh nerfing pyrotechnics but other than that uh there's probably not much that needs to be changed from them looks like we've got an age up going to be coming now through for genghis khan he's going to be looking to head up towards that fourth agent unfortunately that uh that that monk does get sniped so i think 3db is going to be happy that he managed to take out the uh the relic there from his opponent but at the same time he uh, he knows that it's it's still a difficult spot we see that the scores at the moment are quite even uh 3db is managing to keep up with genghis khan but obviously he's playing the mongols uh, and you never really know exactly how far ahead or behind they are uh, but now those spears really coming out in, in quite significant force as well still got that age up ready to go hasn't yet dropped it down he's mining up some uh, some more stone on on this back line so could look to add a third town center unlikely probably just going to be going towards a castle he is at 91 villages at the moment and should be able to round out his uh, his villager population with the remaining uh town centers because it does keep in mind act as two town centers or three town centers rather plenty of units out for him uh, we'll take a look and see what 3db's got in store for us moving that monastery around continuing to move it around uh, plenty of villagers on this gold mine as well. He's got 21 villagers down here. So basically, it acts as 30 villagers there. So give him a, a 70 villager count. He's not too far behind his opponent at this point, but uh, plenty of Manganai coming out. This is a very curious decision. I don't know how I feel about it. Manganai don't get a count, a bonus against... Yeah, they don't get a bonus against um, against Spearmen. So they're just doing raw damage. And they get absolutely slaughtered by Spearmen because Spearmen do 10 damage plus 23. So it's like four shots and they kill them. Yeah, four shots. And, uh, and they're going to be killing those. So... Yeah, they're going to be trying their best to get away, but uh, we've got that relic getting picked up now. Going to be slowly walking back, working back. He needs to be careful. He's going to get sniped there, but uh, he can't. He's actually free to wall alone. What, what is killing him? It's the Khan that's killing him. Khan manages to leave him alive. Oh, he gets the snipe, the fadeaway shot from downtown. Seven range on that Khan, apparently seven range, quote unquote. Looks like 46 to me. Jeez, Louise, did you see that thing? What the heck? That was, that was ludicrous. Spear's now going to be moving to <laughs> moving towards this uh, this back area. He's going to be finally looking to close it up. He does manage to take out a few spears with him. And uh, he's going to need a third monk to come out there and help him out. Bang and I are going to be trying their best to hold on. But keep in mind, once these uh, once these upgrades start coming through, and keep in mind, he can actually uh, empower these. So he can go from for, uh, from iron undermesh to plus two to plus three very quickly if he's using the supervision uh, of his Imperial official. Now we've got that university coming up. Probably going to have elite army tactics coming through as well as ancient techniques. Uh, do we have the second dynasty coming through? It doesn't look like it. You'd be able to tell from the line of sight. Uh, so sometimes you do get the Yuan Dynasty coming through. He's sitting in Song at the moment. So Yuan Dynasty going to require that Imperial Palace. And that's going to give him uh, access to the Fire Lancer. So we'll have to keep an eye out and see whether he goes down that route. Uh, not a lot of villagers on gold and uh, falling quite short of it at the moment. We'll have to see what upgrades he looks to go for. So actually going just he very heavy on the, uh, the plus two melee upgrades. But now really starting to build up that mass. We'll check and see what upgrades he's got coming in. Looks like he's going straight for Elite Spearman. 
Also getting Tithe Barns to come in as well. Quite an expensive upgrade. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it's, it's a decent upgrade. And now going to be able to finally close up the back up here. We've got 20 minutes or sitting at 19 minutes at this point in time. And this finally gets closed out. Obviously, 3DB, had he known when he committed to this what, what the end result would have been, I don't think he would have gone for it. Uh, that is for certain. Uh, but now going to be moving out, looking to secure this gold mine here with a keep. A very wise choice, especially on a map like this. It is one of those maps where you can play slowly, methodically. But now we've got ourselves a little bit of a fight going to be happening. Mangadai coming in, looking to get on top of those nest of bees on the back line. You can see just how many nest of bees are out here. They're going to get all of these beautiful shots off into the Mangadai. That castle is still trying its best to get up, and Spears doing their best to keep the Mangadai off the nest of bees. And they sit behind the wall, and it really asks a or begs the question, how do you deal with this? I think the only answer is going to be Springles. He needs to get some form of Springles out. Otherwise, how is he going to possibly deal with this? Because not only do they sit behind walls, but there's like 10 of these bad boys. Not really like eight of them, but still, it's a lot. It's a lot of nest of bees. But uh, now he is uh, continuing to try his best. We see that arrow going to be coming off there. I think it was just the uh, the movement speed arrow. He wants to try and get... Oh, no, it's the hawk that's come out. I do apologize. Uh, but now that castle is going to be going down. Nest of bees continuing to move up. And uh, 3DB going to be having a bit of a tough time as the Mangadai try and get into the back line. But the uh, nest of bees just chicotiring off right now. Village is going to manage to get up that castle as well. And Genghis Khan really looking to secure up this game. Genghis is going to be able to push out. We can see that he's got plus two melee. I think he's got plus three attack. We'll have a look. No, only the plus three at this point. Uh, so no real upgrades for him at this stage. Has he actually managed to go for... No, he hasn't uh, just yet. So, um, oh, actually, no, I take that back. He's gone for elite army tactics, I think it is. Bombard now going to be coming out as well for the Chinese player. And this to me seals the game. Because like, how, how does he even respond to this? Because, like, you, you got to think about it realistically. He's in the, he's in the third age. Um, I mean, Springles is the correct answer, but at this point in time, like, oh, my God, look at the resources that he's got access to. He's got way too many. He's got so many villagers on gold, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's just the power of the step right out. Uh, so, far out, look at the production that he's got in this base right now. This is ludicrous. I mean, it looks crazy, but at the same time, it's really not. Um, now going to be heading up towards the next age, dropping down that white stupa inside his base. Keep in mind, he does have that nice sealed up base. This is like the, the dream spawn right here. This is what all civs dream about. If, if it was any other civ other than Mongol, you just know that they would have walled like 18 times across here. Like that is, They would have found some way to wall across here 18 times. I'm telling you that much. But now we'll take a look over towards the center of the map as we have those nest of bees continuing to fire off. Looks like it was a lancer or a, a, a yeah, a lancer that went down there. Nest of bees going to continue pushing out. A couple of clockwork, a clock tower, I was going to say clock tower bumblebees, uh, clock tower bombards now moving out towards this. But uh, Genghis going to be, I, I love the methodical play. And this is how I would describe this. I would say it's methodical. Pushing up, walling, waiting. He's going to put a gate down through here. Then he's going to wall again. And then slowly push up, wall, wait. Push up, wall, wait. Push up, wall, wait. Just rinse, repeat that every single day of the week. You are going to be fine. And you're eventually just going to be sitting and knocking at heaven's door. And you're going to be able to push through. And, uh, you know, what does 3DB even do to respond to that? You know, it's, it's got to be sprinkles. The only thing... Like right now, 3DB, what does he need to do? Go for improved. So where is it? Right here. So he needs to be going for... Actually, Siege Workshop. Do we have any... Siege? Please tell me we have a Siege Workshop coming out from. We don't even have a Siege Workshop coming out right now. It's going to be really tough to win this game without a Siege Workshop 3DB. Uh, so he needs to get improved roller shutter triggers. And then he needs to get like seven or eight nest of bees out. Oh, nest of bees. Uh, Springles out. But now it looks like he's going to be pushing in towards his enemy. Beautiful choke point here. Using the castle as a really wonderful choke point. Nest of bees sitting safely on the back line. This is such a toxic China playstyle. Like, you really... Like, how do you even deal with this? Like, obviously, th there is Springles that can deal with it. But at the same time, it's going to take so much time to build that up. To get that up to standard. To get it up to scratch. You've got upgrades that you've got to deal with. Infrastructure that you've got to put down. I mean, you know your your enemy is going some sort of infantry compos or uh, siege composition, so you can potentially counter it. But at the same time, it's, it, it just calls for so many resources to be invested to even make it decent. And it looks like he's going to be tapping out 3DB surrendering here. So no real surprise considering his failed rush finished. But obviously, uh, when it comes to China, if you don't kill him, they kill you. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this, I'll leave a link in the description over to 3DB's channel. Make sure you go check him out. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.